So after 20 hours and four days, the book is in the can and uh, it's being edited as I speak. But I wanted to basically talk you through the four days and the ups and downs in the process of actually doing an audiobook. So day one was my first day in the studio. We recorded chapters one to six, and this was probably the most exciting and terrifying day because it meant getting used to the space, getting used to working with a technician, and my own technician, Aaron, was awesome. Aaron, if you're watching this, thank you. And also learning how to manage flubs when you're doing an audiobook, to go back and to repeat the line and to try to stay in the flow and the emotion of whatever you're reading. Day two, we recorded chapters 7 to 12. No, chapter 7 to 13. And day two was the hardest day, if I'm being honest. I was under pressure. I felt, or I at least knew, that we needed to get through a certain amount each day to be on track for the four days. So I went in nervous on the second day. And I was also nervous because I knew some of the chapters coming up were more emotional and more difficult than others. We did get through the day, but I can remember as the clock was, was ticking, we were just on the cusp and I finished and I was like, oh, Thank God, I have a few hours to rest and prepare for day three. Day three was our best day. This was when Aaron and myself had settled into a real, real nice working relationship. He had never worked with someone who stuttered before and I had briefed him a little bit. But to his credit uh, and to my own, we settled into a really nice rhythm. It was very much like a dance. Um, and we got through chapters 14 to 21. So this was the most productive day when we really were getting through chapter by chapter. Day four was the final day, and this was, I suppose for me, the best day, the most relaxed day, because I had gone in knowing that we would finish on time, um, maybe even a little earlier. Okay, hello. It is 2.30 on Friday. We have just officially wrapped uh, the book. Whew. It's, been a, <laughs> it's been a great experience. Um, I was nervous, like I said, about getting it finished on time. And so to come in a few hours early is great. Um, yeah, a huge thank you again to uh, Tom, Aaron and to everyone at Monarch Studios. Uh, it's been a really great experience and uh, one... I'm thrilled to have done. Uh, a huge thank you to my father and Natcom for making this happen as well. So my thoughts and experiences on this whole journey, well, there's a couple. The first one is, I think definitely if you're an author and you've thought about doing an audiobook, whether you have a stutter or not, it's a great experience. Reading your own material rather than writing it is not the same thing and it really allowed me to reconnect with what I'd put on the page in a creative way. I think it was great to have experts there to certainly pay to have someone manage the technical side so you don't have to worry about it also helped and having the space ready and prepared really helped. The other thing about this is if, you know, the preparation is important if you're considering it. I certainly spent two or three months prepping the book, reading it orally, marking beats, you know, being very familiar with what was coming day by day, but it's definitely worth doing. My second thought uh, was really about satisfaction. As a trained actor and performer, it was a very different experience. There is a temptation to overplay the emotion when you're reading, to get lost in the scene, to get lost in the emotion. And uh, I was told, again, by Aaron, who's more experienced, to underplay it. So I actually got to, again, experience it on a different level, and it allowed me to work a different kind of muscle. The third takeaway is probably the most important and is related to the first two. As someone who stutters, I would describe myself as an unsuccessful covert stutterer. So I can hide it most of the time. 
And recently I've had to accept that stuttering is not black and white. It's not disfluency and fluency. It's a scale. And this experience was operating on a scale. Day two was the most difficult and I could feel that. And in my speech, it was there as well. And on other days, it was more fluent. And I'm always someone who wants perfection. I wanted it to be the best product it could be. And I had to learn to accept that it wasn't going to be that every time. And the other thing as well, as a product, I was thinking like, how much stuttering do you put in? As an audiobook, if you're expecting people to pay for it, it is a marketed product. And I'm sure there are some people who will say, oh, he doesn't really stutter. Is he just using this as a way to sell books? And then I'll have other people who stutter who will say, there's not enough stuttering. Is he going for fluency? And in the past, this would have, this would have taken me out. I would have been worried and concerned. And again, I had to look and ask the experts and say, what do I do? What should I do? And the answer was, keep it natural. And going back to this idea of stuttering on a scale, it's something, I'll be quite honest, I've just spoken to my family and my speech was not great. And I asked myself, how can I read a book fluently in one situation and then in the other be disfluent where it should be easier? And I was like, ah, it's the scale. And that's really, I think, the biggest takeaway. It's given me the opportunity to really have to accept that because there is no cure, there is no fluency at the end of the day. And what the audio book is, is what it was on the day. It's who I was on that day. And the end product is what it was on the day. And that kind of gives me a lot of space. It makes me feel both proud and confident of what it is. And it really brings just one more drive full circle. It fully completes the book. So now there's the audio book, the ebook, and the paper version. And it brings that part of my life to completion. And for that, I'm incredibly grateful. So thank you. If you've watched the first two videos, I hope this is a satisfying wrap up and I hope it's inspired you to maybe look at doing your own audio book. Um, if you do, I strongly recommend Monarch Studios. Uh, their contact information is in the link below. Again, thank you to everyone who helped me make this possible. And I'll be posting um, one last time uh, to basically announce when the audio book itself is available. Thanks.